Hello everyone and thank you for clicking on the Literacy Volunteers of Harrison County YouTube channel. We're a nonprofit United Way agency. Today we're going to talk about spring. Since spring was just a few days ago on March the 21st and we're recording this on uh, March the 24th, just three days ago, we want to talk about all things spring. First of all, let's look at the spring equinox. That's considered the start of spring in the northern hemisphere. And we will look, if you look at a globe and it's divided into half, we'll look at that in a little bit. Hemi means half, so the northern half. And that's also known as the March equinox, or sometimes another name for spring is vernal, vernal equinox. That means spring. So that is when the sun crosses over the, li the line of the equator and begins traveling north. And I put on here, in case you don't know what the equator is, that's the imaginary line drawn around the Earth equally distant from both poles, North Pole and South Pole, so it's equally distant toward the middle, and it divides the Earth into those northern and southern hemispheres. And the parallel of that latitude is zero degrees. So the equator is zero degrees, and then we start to move up as we go toward the poles. So right now, as it's spring here, when it becomes summer in the northern hemisphere, it'll become winter in the southern hemisphere, and vice versa. So that's, that has to do with their distance away from the sun. So we want to look at spring flowers because that's an important part of spring. We know that spring is going to be here when we start to see the spring flowers and let's look step by step how they would grow. So that they're going to start with a seed and this is this represents the seed and then when we plant the seeds down in the dirt <coughs> the roots start to grow from the seeds into the soil and these roots take up nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, different nutrients like that, and also water. That's why we water plants. So all of those travel up the roots into the seed, and as those roots keep digging down into the soil, we get this plant that emerges through the soil. So here's our seed, there are the roots, and the plant comes up. Through photosynthesis, which we've talked about before, the plant uses the sunlight to grow. And in the spring, when we're on the daylight savings time like we are now, and it gets stays lighter earlier, we have more hours of daylight, so there's more sunlight for those plants to utilize. And then as it continues to grow, we have the, the plant, then we start to see the flower that begins to bloom and this is a representation there of the flower at the end of the of the stem of the plant all right that's step four step five we have all of these colorful petals um, that start to form on the flower and then that sweet smell from those flowers a lot of people love the, the smell of flowers they attract things like pollinators in this instance there's this butterfly that senses that smell and comes to the to the flower and they perch up on the flower and they drink from the nectar and I put down here that the nectar is just a sugary fluid sort of like like a sugar watery tasting fluid and it's secreted by these plants because they want to attract those pollinators to encourage them to, to pollinate other the other flowers so then those little pollen grains stick to the legs and the body parts of this butterfly if you look at a pollen grain under a microscope it looks like a spiked ball it's round and has little spikes all the way over it and um, that's why it sticks too easily to this butterfly or if you have allergies and you smell that pollen and it gets up it irritates your nasal passages because all those little spikes are bothering your, na your nasal passages. So this butterfly he goes from this flower he's got all that pollen stuck to him and he flies over to this flower and some of those pollen they go on the grains go on this new flower and they fall off down there onto it. Um, so then they land on the flower stigma, and the stigma is the part of the pistil where the pollen germinates. And if you're interested in parts of the flower, we have a different video, a separate video on parts of a flower. And they begin to germinate. And germinate is just the development of a plant from a seed or a spore after a period of dormancy. Dormancy means that it was asleep for a little bit, and then it comes up. You notice no flowers around here bloom in the winter. So they're dormant in the winter. And then when the spring comes, then they start to bloom. So we have a tube that grows from the pollen grain down to the flower's ovary. And then we have little cells from our pollen grain here that travel all the way down and, and, and fertilize all of these ovules. And then the ovules grow into new seeds. So after that happens, all of those petals will fall off of the flower. See how they wilt and they fall to the ground. And now we have a healthy ovary that's attached to our stem. The ovary is the fruit. 
So as the ovules grow into seeds, the ovary begins to expand and becomes the fruit, and it will eventually tear open to release the new seeds. And once you know, you've cut open a watermelon or an apple or any of those that have the little seeds in them, once we get those, we can disperse them back and those seeds grow down, they land on the ground, and if their right conditions are there, they'll start to grow again and it starts all over. That's called a life cycle. Cycle meaning it goes in a circle. So um, all of the plants won't be blooming at the same time, but they'll go through their own separate life cycle. They have their own separate pollinators. So we want to look at some common West Virginia spring flowers and at the end of this video we're going to put a lot of pictures of those and if you would like to send them in, if you have a garden or you have pictures of spring flowers you would like to send in and we can put those up on our YouTube channel. Um, some of the common ones are crocuses, uh, primroses, tulips, peonies, all of these will bloom between now and April here in West Virginia. Um, we have some wildflowers also that grow. Sometimes you're driving along the interstate and you'll see all those beautiful flowers in the median or along the side. Well, um, yellow lady slippers, um, early sacrophage, Indian paintbrush, marsh marigold. We have a dwarf larkspur and Dutchman's breeches. I'll try to find pictures of these and we'll put those up with our video as well so that you get to see what all of these different flowers look like. But we've talked about spring flowers and we know spring is now because we're in the northern hemisphere and we're past the vernal equinox. What else comes in spring? Easter. And we know that Easter is soon, but let's look at some things about Easter. When is it? How, how do we determine the date of Easter? Christmas is December 25th. New Year's Eve is December 31st. New Year's Day is January 1st every year. Why does Easter move around? Why isn't it the same Sunday every year? Well, it's related to the full moon. Easter is celebrated on the first Sunday following the full moon that occurs on or just after that vernal or that spring equinox. That's why it moves. So for 2022, for this year, the spring equinox is on Sunday, March the 20th, which, is, which was already passed, right? We just had the spring equinox. The first full moon to occur after that is going to be on Saturday, April 16th. So we have to wait till then. Therefore, we've had the vernal equinox. We've had the full moon. So that next Sunday, April 17th, is Easter Sunday. So every year it's the first Sunday after the vernal equinox, after the full moon. Every year, that's when Easter is. Um, so, and then I looked at, had some information, I thought this was interesting. The most common Easter dates over a 500 year period from 1600 AD to way after us, 2099, Easter will most often be celebrated on either March 31st or April 16th. Those will be the two most common days according to the, the calendar that we follow. What is the meaning of Easter? So we know when we're going to celebrate Easter, why? So Easter is a principal holiday or a feast of Christianity. It, it's going to mark the resurrection of Jesus three days after his death by crucifixion. So Christians on Easter celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Easter is a joyful end to the Lenten season of fasting and pen, penitence. Usually people will fast those af after Ash Wednesday heading into Easter and that's sort of the fasting is sort of like um, to bring you into a line with your body and your mind to know that some things you have to give up right and that's sort of a, the penitence thing and Easter derives from the old English word and, and this is E-A-S-T-R-E or E-O-S-T-R-E and that refers to the Anglo-Saxon goddess of the dawn in the spring so the name sort of comes from from that spring meaning. That's where Easter comes from. So then we're looking at, now we know where Easter comes from, what about um, the Easter bunny or Easter eggs? So where, uh, then where do the Easter eggs originate? Where do we come up with that idea? Why do we color eggs on Easter? They're a very old tradition dating back to a time even before Christianity, before this, this Easter was this holiday. Um, in pagan times, the eggs were a symbol of fertility and rebirth. So in spring, we've just talked about the flowers. It, the ground is fertile. You can plant things. They're going to grow. We have more sunlight. It's sort of a rebirth of, of the whole, um, of all of nature, the grass, the trees, everything starts to grow, right? So um, they are um, hard boiled, those eggs, and they're painted in various colors and patterns, sort of a, a rebirth. Those eggs are marking a rebirth. Even if you think about human fertility, we all come from an egg, a fertilized egg. So that's sort of, that's our birth, our rebirth. 
Um, a couple other traditions. In Persia, eggs have been painted for thousands of years as part of the spring celebration of No Ruse, and that's a Zoroastrian New Year. So they paint those eggs. And in Iran, colored eggs are placed on a dinner table at that feast, and the mother eats one cooked egg for each child she has. Just a different tradition. We have to know that everywhere, all over the world, they celebrate Easter in many different ways or use eggs in many different ways, not just how we would hear. And that kind of expands your thinking about it. And then the Easter bunny. Everybody knows the Easter bunny, right? The idea of the egg giving hair, that's a bunny, H-A-R-E, right? came in the U.S. in the 18th century from German immigrants, people who came here from Germany. That means to immigrate, right? They came here. And they were in the Pennsylvania Dutch area, which is pretty close to where we are now. They told their children about the Osterhaus, right? Osterhaus. And that's something also called, sometimes it's called the Osterscherhaus. So the same kind of thing. So these people told their kids about the Osterhaus. Haus means hair, which means rabbit. And the children made little nests for the hair, and in them they would uh, leave a place for them to put the colored eggs. So the hair would come in, and the little nest the children built, and leave colored eggs for the children. Eventually, as this custom started to spread across the United States, the fabled uh, rabbit's Easter morning deliveries expanded. So then he starts to bring chocolate, or other types of candy, or little gifts, and um, the decorated baskets replace nests. A lot of people get an Easter basket. We don't have an Easter nest anymore. So you put all your eggs in the basket or you put your candy in the basket or your gifts in a basket. Um, bunnies aren't the only animal that's traditionally associated with Easter. I didn't know this. I thought this was interesting. In other, in other countries, they, they identify the holiday with foxes or cuckoo birds. So those are just the sort of other animals that they use to help them celebrate Easter. So today we looked at a lot of things spring. We know what spring means. We know when spring occurs. We talked about spring flowers and how they um, have a life cycle. We looked at the Easter bunny. We looked at colored eggs. We looked at Easter in general. And um, if you have any traditions that your family celebrates and you'd like to leave them below or leave a comment, or if you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and like it. Or you can always subscribe to our channel. And we would like to thank you very much for joining us today.